Have you ever wondered which computer part would be the best conductor? I mean, like seriously, what would happen if you took a processor, put two leads on it, and see how much current you could run through it? Would it be better than a graphics card? Today we're going to try a couple different things, and we're going to see what's the best conductor. Which part of your computer is going to do the best job at conducting that electricity? Why would you need to conduct electricity through computer parts? I don't know, maybe you need to build a wire real quick and all you had was a computer. Very valid reason, I'm sure. So in today's video, we're going to try that out. In order to do this video, we're going to need a power supply. Not one of these. This is a computer power supply. We're going to need one of these. This is a power supply that lets you control voltage and also have some outputs. Technically, it's the same thing. This way, you get some leads. Also, has a nice little fancy output so it shows me how much current's going through it and how much voltage is going through it. Now, fun electrical engineering fact, you could actually technically figure out what's the better conductor by doing a simple, like, test with the multimeter. That is, you take your trusty multimeter, you switch it to the resistance. The lower the resistance, the better of a conductor it is, and that's the end of the video. Except, you should know by now, this is Jay's tech fault. Do you really think we do something that simple? So, like, real quick, just a quick test. Obviously, this is not what we're going to end up doing, of course. Um, but like, you can definitely take two leads and it will tell you how much resistance. Two, two mega ohms worth the resistance between my two fingers here. Also, you can try a couple of things like this metal on top of the power supply. So very low resistance on our power supply here. That's a simple test we could do. There's a problem with that. Of course, it's easy. So alternatively, we could do something a little bit more destructive. We could run current through there, set a voltage, we'll just say, uh, I don't know, 20 volts. We set 20 volts and we clip on either side of the computer, or not the computer, our processor for example, and the more current that runs through the processor, the more conductive it is. We set everything 20 volts, 20 volts either way, and then the more current that flows through it, the better. Obviously that's quite destructive, I refuse to actually damage anything of somewhat importance out of respect for the gamers out there. Let's get everything hooked up and let's see how much electricity we can get running through different computer parts. Today's crystal clear video is brought to you by Micro Center. Have you visited Micro Center before? The holy land of gamers? Have you gazed upon the glory of the aisles and aisles of computer parts and hardware? Or maybe you're less fortunate and uh, you're in one of the areas that has a Micro Center drought like myself. You can also use the Micro Center PC builder and have Micro Center professionals build it for you. And also submit your build to get a coupon that you can use in your next Micro Center purchase. New customers get access to the Red Dragon Peripheral Bundle when they actually visit a Micro Center in person. And gaze upon the aisles and aisles of computer parts and technology or get help with your computer building needs there. Micro Center can also fix your PC if you're having problems with that. So thank you Micro Center for providing me a new camera to make these videos crystal clear. Got our nice fancy power supply here. This isn't sponsored. This is just the one that I use. So starting off, let's turn this on. So a couple things you'll notice right away. Up here, we have the voltage, which is the potential or pressure in the wires to like connect the circuit. The bottom number, the current, which for the purpose of today's video, given our whack test that we're doing, the higher that number, the more conductive it is. While it's directly correlated to resistance, Ohm's law, the higher that number is, the lower the resistance, and therefore the better conductor it is. So um, we're gonna start with uh, 12 volts. Why am I gonna start with 12 volts? Because 12 volts, we're in a good old power supplies here. This is a standard computer power supply. It spits out 12 volts. So clearly your processor should be able to support 12 volts. Um, it shouldn't have any issue with 12 volts. Now obviously I'm being sarcastic here. Please don't assume that 12 volts on any contact on your computer is not going to be okay. There's lots of stepping down, stepping up that goes on in a computer with voltage. First thing we've got is a graphics card. Card. I think this is some really old thing. I got like a yard sale. Basically how a PCB works is you have a bunch of different layers. We have a potential that we make contact ground layer, which is basically a continuous layer that spreads throughout the whole PCB. Make contact with ground again, and we have no issue connecting, and we have no issue current, and you really don't damage the product. But there's also a high probability you damage something really important. Don't try it at home. Let me do the stupidity for you. Here's what happens. I have this rated to 5.1 amps. Probably should drop this down a little bit. Let's start with one amp because this is gonna cause smoke if we do. But now we turn this on, this light means it's enabled. So right now we have nothing, it's not connected. So no currents flowing through it. Air is not a really good conductor. Um, but when we get close to it, it should get close to that one amp. It's also interesting that it kind of becomes sticky almost when you touch them it kind of has the tendency to want to stay together. Also, another thing to keep in mind is 12 volts is relatively safe. As long as your hands are dry, we're not doing anything particularly dangerous. 
please stay away from anything above 30 volts, roughly, and uh, it will break your skin and have the potential to electrocute you. For the purposes of today's video, don't try this at home unless you know what you're doing. Especially don't plug in things to the wall and then assume that you know what you're doing. So obviously I have the output off. I want to make one contact on this side and another contact on this side. Now we're going to see how much electricity runs through it. Clearly, this is not a good conductor. Now why is this not a good conductor? Well apparently I didn't make contact with a good spot. So I'm going to turn this back off now. I want to make contact with a couple different spots on the board here. And I'm going to make contact like that. Now let's see how much electricity we get flowing through here. Also none. Graphics card looks like a great conductor. Full one amp, and we don't even have to get much higher than the one volt. So while yes, it's set to 12 volts, absolutely no issue. Go on here and attach this to different parts on the board. But um, basically what happens is, especially with these graphics cards, um, if you come over here and take a look. So each of these, some of these have actual um, pins that they hook up to. So they go to the grounding layer. And that grounding layer um, is spread throughout the whole board. So think of it like a, a sheet of metal. Some of these pins go directly into that sheet of metal that's across the whole board. And so basically you're just completing the circuit. You have one probe on this side, other probe on this side. It just goes down through that sheet of metal and then out the other end and doesn't really cause much harm. Um, if you were to attach it to something kind of important, let's say we can attach it directly to the die. See what happens. So let's say, um, I'm gonna do it on this side again. See if I can do one of the grounding pins real quick. Those all look like some good old grounding pins. Now that should come as no surprise as the die itself is silicon and silicon is a semiconductor. So therefore the wires and all the components that actually handle the electricity are probably actually buried somewhat deeper down than the surface. Cause obviously there is a couple layers in case you like damage something. Now I'm sure if we run our fingers along the edge here, you'll notice that some pins become really good conductors. I do notice it's interesting that a lot more of these back here, of these pins back here, uh, are ground pins, which likely means that this card is probably an 8x and only utilizes some of it. Who knows? I could be wrong on that. It looks like a lot of these capacitors. I also better be careful I don't blow any- oh, there was a spark. Also, keep in mind there's a potential to actually blow a capacitor here. It's kind of a stupid idea, so we'll probably switch off. Basically, graphics card, really good conductor. There's a potential we didn't damage anything. There's also a potential this card won't turn on, so as I said, don't try anything at home. Next up, let's try a power supply. This power supply is somewhat good, so we're not going to do anything too stupid. That's probably all we're going to do. Why? As much as I'm sure you guys would like to see me open this up, um, plug something into, plug something, no, no, no. The reason why is because inside of this sucker, you have some capacitors that are pretty much mains voltage, 120 volts, 220 volts, depending on where you live. And those would also be a great idea to put some metal in there. So for the purpose of today's video, educational, don't put your probes in weird holes. Let's give that a shot. This should be a pretty standard one. Turn this bad boy on. That's kind of interesting, I think, the the connection. I'm actually surprised at how good of an insulator this paint that they have is. So we've done the graphics card, we've done the power supply. Next up is the RAM. One gigabyte of DDR2. I think this was a donation someone sent into the mailbox. Everyone can agree one gigabyte of SODEM DDR3 is not uh, anything other than e-waste. Uh, not, it's not DDR3, it's DDR2. So uh, I'm going to hook the sucker up to one side. Here we go like that. Hook the sucker up to the other side, like that. Turn this on real quick, and uh, see how much electricity we get through it. Oh, so that's interesting. Um, that's actually kind of expected, but that also shows me that something interesting is happening here. Um, we know that the ground layer is shared almost ubiquitously by um, PC parts, so they're gonna have that ground layer. But it looks like something else is happening, because if it was making contact on that ground layer, it'd probably be pinned at one volt, or one amp. However, this looks like this is routing through some other way. It could be routing through the silicon. It could be routing, which the silicon on here, which is what these little chips are. It could be routing through a couple other things too. So it's also interesting that this is going down. This is probably degrading something, I'm sure. So this is much more likely to have fried something than the graphics card, which, I mean, we touched a bunch of things that probably shouldn't have gotten touched. But um, sharing something through the ground layer versus doing it this way, um, this is definitely going to slowly, pretty sure, like this is pretty much equivalent to overclocking. You're pumping more voltage through it and you're trying to push the circuit faster while overclocking itself isn't inherently bad. It's the voltage that eventually degrades the circuit, which I'm pretty sure that's what we're seeing here. 
So let's see if we can get a better connection. And as you can see, now we got that one volt of continuous voltage. So um, basically all I'm doing is 12 volts, something that should normally go through a computer. And uh, that's basically trying to get one amp out of it, which as you can tell, didn't work out too well. That's probably fried. And finally, the finale that you all have been waiting for, the CPU. So first up, let's see if the IHS or the heat spreader. What do you know? The top of the heat sink is actually a valid conductor. You know how stupid this video would have done if I just took a multimeter and like ran like literally microvolts through things? Now, I'm sure what y'all are interested in more though is me attacking the pins on the bottom here, taking my little probe like this, going like that and going, oh yeah, that looks great. And doing the same thing on the other side. I think that's awesome. So also, likely made contact with some ground pin. I guess the thing I want to point out though is people make stuff like, oh, that's not a lot of current. And you're right, that's not a lot of current. Except for the fact that in these the scale of parts, you're talking about like milliamps worth of current that flows through graphics cards. And when you talk about the silicon die itself, um, it gets a super, super small amounts of voltage and current. You know, you might see per core basis something about three volts in actual like silicon die processors. When you overclock things, you may be looking at like 1 1.2 volts or something per core. So the voltage while being 12 volts in theory may not be enough. It may not be a lot actually. And it may actually be something that's commonly found in a computer. The, the amperage also in the scale of these small components is astronomical. Same thing goes for the voltage. So... I hope you guys learned something. I guess what part is the best computer part? What, what is the part is the most conductive computer part? It would honestly go, probably go up to what has the best grounding layer, which I mean, all of these products probably have really good grounding layers. So if we were to actually take a, a guess based off of that, it would probably be distance. And since I've only, you know, that's the shortest distance it's most likely that's the better conductor, assuming it's all made out of the same materials. Um, so technically a processor, but in reality it would be tossed up to actually the grounding layer. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a wonderful day and thanks for checking out the channel. Hope you learned something. Uh, don't try this at home. Don't stick your probes anywhere they don't belong. Oh yeah, make sure to subscribe and uh, have a great day.